So today, Theology Research News meets with Kao Leuven's Professor of Liturgical Theology, Professor Joris Geldof, uh, to talk about his new publication, Liturgical Theology as a Research Program. Um, we'd like to start with a quotation from your book, Professor. Um, Liturgical theology does not simply deal with Christian rituals, festivals, and sacraments, but with the core of faith itself. Um, so I suppose as our first question, we'd like to ask you to comment a little bit about uh, what that means and if you can expand upon it. Yes. Well, I think one of the things that I try to demonstrate in the book is that uh, liturgy is a very broad, deep, and extensive concept. And it is true that it is meant to be a certain reaction against certain reductions and reductive and reductionalist views on, on Christian liturgy. And the most obvious concept that comes to mind is often the one of ritual. And when people think of Christian liturgy, then they would immediately associate it with rituals. But I think that there is, in and through those rituals, it is not that liturgy is not dealing with rituals, of course, that's of course not the case, but in and through those rituals, there is a lot more. There is the word of God, there is the appropriation of the word of God, there is God's revelation, there is God's salvation, core elements of the Christian faith as a whole, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, the Church, uh, all of these elements are involved in liturgy. So when you look at Christian liturgy and deal it only from an exterior perspective as a ritual among other rituals, I think my basic point is then you miss the best part. So I suppose that will sort of lead quite nicely on to the first question, which is um, what specifically has inspired you to envisage liturgical theology as a research program? I have been blessed with, the, with having been the promoter of several doctoral dissertations. And I, I've seen all my doctoral students working in liturgy, working with liturgical sources, and that I've stimulated to develop theological thinking. I've seen them struggling with methodological issues. And the key question is how you can draw theological insight, also spiritual insight, but theological insight from liturgical sources. Liturgical sources that are not only texts, not only the official books, for instance, that are used for, uh, for liturgical celebrations. So I think that I've seen many of my doctoral students struggling with, with this. And it's not that I wanted to give them the solution with this book, but I wanted to accompany them on their methodological uh, path. Um, so that is the real experience that, that motivated me uh, most in a way to write this book, because I am deeply convinced that liturgical theology is capable of research, is that it is important to achieve theological, deeper, broader, uh, future-oriented theological insights when studying the liturgical core of Christianity in its ritual form, in its textual form, in its artistic form, in the many shapes that it, the, that it embodies. Uh, I, I'm deeply convinced that it is possible, but it is a real challenge in, in contemporary academia to show how that is possible. And I think that my essay is meant as, uh, as a kind of stimulus for, uh, uh, for them to find that way and also for many others. And as, maybe as a second element uh, of a response to your question, it's the, the, the way in which I use the word research program. There is a double layer there. There is a research program in a more technical sense, as in the sense of the research projects that are funded by, by, by all kinds of agencies in, in theology and religious studies and in all the other humanities and all the other disciplines that the university is uh, operational in. 
what I mean by research program is that, but also a deeper level. And for that deeper level, I am inspired by the Dutch theologian Erik Borgman, who speaks of God as a research program. And that has to do with his own Dominican uh, inspiration that could also be a Benedictine or a, a Jesuit Ignatian in inspiration. That is, how do you find God everywhere? And that is such, if you are convinced that you can find God, that God lets himself be found anywhere, this is a deep motivation for theologians to engage in research. You will go and look where God, the divine, can be, uh, can be found and experienced. How, I suppose if you do, how do you distinguish liturgical theology from studies of Christian worship? Um, and therefore what kind of distinguishes that as its own theological enterprise. Um, so I suppose there's two questions. Are they distinct? Is Christian worship and study on Christian worship, is that distinct from liturgical theology? And if so, how? I do think that liturgical theology is distinctive and that it can be and uh, distinguished from other cognate uh, um, disciplines uh, and, approach it, uh, and approaches. The many studies of Christian worship uh, included, of course, whether you, they have a more historical approach, a philological uh, approach, a phenomenological uh, approach, an empirical, uh, an empirical approach. But I do not think that it is either wise or possible to try to almost with surgical precision distinguish them. I think that liturgical theology is comprehensive and it is also holistic. It is a dimension in, not opposite to, but it is an, a motivation within a study of Christian worship, a possible motivation. It is not that liturgical theology should be the only possible entry into it, but liturgical theology is basically proactively, that is why it is a research program, looking for opportunities to access the Lit what I call in the book liturgical reality. And liturgical reality is much broader than rituals or texts or celebrations. But there is something that I call liturgical reality. And there are many ways to approach it, to get into it, to study it, to show how relevant it is. Uh, and that is what I think liturgical theology must be doing primarily. Looking for ways to access this liturgical reality and creating new entries into it and finding again old ones that had been hidden or concealed by ideological discourses or by, uh, uh, um, by a certain one-sidedness of, of, of academic and other theological approaches. Liturgical theology must break all these things open so as to more easily uh, make liturgical reality accessible. Within the field of liturgical theology, the notion comes up of liturgy as primary theology. Um, so I suppose for those of us who aren't quite so initiated into liturgical theology, can you expand a little bit on um, what that really means and, and what the consequences and implications are of that for um, Christian theology as a whole, really? Yes, that, that's, that question pertains to um, a very intensive debate, both within liturgical theology, that means among those scholars who identify as liturgical theologians, and it is also a big debate about liturgical theology and about some claims that liturgical theologians uh, um, of the recent past have made with some um, fervor and with some rhetorical uh, force, um, not to mention uh, Aidan Kavanaugh, uh, for instance. Now, what is meant by the claim that liturgy is primary theology is misunderstood completely if the immediate association is with a rigid classification system and with a hierarchy. Then, of course, everyone feels threatened 
then the biblical scholars feel threatened, the systematic theologians feel threatened, the pastoral or practical theologians feel threatened because they also want to occupy the primary place. We deal with Christian practice, we deal with Christian dogma, we deal with, the, with scripture, therefore we are the first. Well, if you see, a, if you operate from a model that allows for, uh, for this behavior, as it were, then you mis misunderstand it, and you sadly misunderstand what is meant by liturgy being primary theology. So it is not about a classification system, it's not about a hierarchy, it's not about downplaying others, it's not by trying to be the first or the strongest. That is not what is in play. That's the negative part. The positive part uh, is much more difficult because anything that is said constructively about liturgy being primary theology will automatically and immediately be suspected because of these claims that are dependent on what I said previously about this, this models of who wants to be the first. Um, so maybe you can refer to the New Testament. Uh, if you want to be the first, then serve all the others. And that, I think, is a very positive and constructive way of looking at liturgical theology. Liturgical theology serves as the deepest motivation of why we need theologians in all kinds of disciplines. It gives them a sense of meaning. It is because Christians celebrate, because Christians participate in the Paschal Mysteries, that we need a deeper doctrinal understanding of what that means, that we need a better historical insight into how that grew, that we need a more uh, a, a more appropriate understanding of the languages in which these things were first formulated and how they developed through the centuries. It is, but it is basically this 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 absolute given that Christians celebrate and participate in the Paschal Mysteries that is primary, that is fundamental to all the rest. Uh, among contemporary tendencies within liturgical theology, uh, which do you consider to be your favorite, or at least the most promising? In, 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 in trying to find an appropriate response to the question, uh, I will try to avoid the question, actually. <laughs> um, I think I will answer it by, 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 not by saying this is what I like, but by trying to formulate some criteria and that, and that if a liturgical theology integrates or responds to some of those criteria, then I think it would be beneficial. And I think that first of all, a liturgical theology that I would like to be associated with has to be comprehensive. It has to be holistic. It should not be one-sided. Secondly, I think it should try to do some good intellectual uh, labor to overcome uh, ideologies. So liturgy is where the church and where all the faithful should find themselves united under the word and listening to and living from the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. So liturgy should not be the battlefield of the ones who think we should rather do this and not do that, or we should prefer this style of celebration over against another style. What is important is that liturgy has a style. But which style it is, and th that depends on so many factors that also go beyond a certain strict liturgical thing. It has to do with cultural factors, with, with, uh, uh, with contextual factors, with social, uh, with social factors, and so forth. So I think that that would be a, a second very important criterion, that it surpasses ideological battlefields. And thirdly, I think that the liturgical theology, uh, for me, would seek convergence with the theological and the spiritual tradition of Christianity with capital T. So with the, the great names, the great 
writings that have shaped a Christian culture and a Christian spirituality and a Christian uh, and a Christian thinking that is still uh, um, uh, valuable and that needs to be ex that always needs to be rediscovered and explored again with vigor. So I could give you a list of authors and 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 and, and of, of thinkers or currents of thought, but I think that that is less relevant. What I do think is important is that, that liturgical theology finds itself in tune with the Christian tradition with with a capital T and all its beauty and all its also all its artistic forms. So thinking of cultural and um, social context, uh, you've affirmed that liturgical theology can take a leading role in the church's dealings with the world, with politics, with culture and art and economics and such. Um, so what are the ways in which liturgy or liturgical theology can be at the forefront of Christian, for lack of a better term, social criticism? I think that um, liturgy and liturgical theology is and should be at the forefront of keeping our eyes open for the, the grand vision. Liturgy is instrumental in keeping ourselves focused on the coming of the kingdom. We are in the period of Advent, but that is one way to, 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 um, to nourish our deepest desires, our desires that, that Christ may come again. And that, that prophetic vision that includes social transformation, that includes existential conversion, not as a one time, uh, um, as one single uh, um, moment in one's life, but as a permanent attitude, an attitude of being receptible for God's grace, a preparedness and a willingness to make this world a better place. I think that a celebration of liturgy is absolutely central in reminding us of the importance of that. And yes, we have to do that through our social commitments, through our ethical decisions, to our professionalism, whatever we are in, whatever status and whatever role we have to play in the society. But it is again in the liturgy that we find ourselves united around all these uh, concerns that are, um, that are dear to us and that matter. So I think that the, 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 the key in the, in the response to your question is the idea of keeping our eyes focused on the vision of the kingdom and of nourishing ourselves to the, to, to the prophetic role that Christians have to play in, in every society. What aspects of liturgical theology do you think are most attractive to students who might want to study um, uh, liturgical theology? in their research and a the other side of that question which aspects do you think are either unattractive or undervalued or sort of intuitively negatively uh, seen and i suppose the third part of that question would then have to be what can be done to allay such fears um, so yes what's attractive what's unattractive and how can we make the unattractive attractive for potential students well be, maybe this is the the hardest question so far because uh, I cannot enter into the minds of the students, of course. And for me, everything in liturgical theology is, uh, is attractive. But more seriously, what, what, what I do think is, is entails a great potential in liturgical theology and what might be attractive uh, uh, for students is, is this integrative approach the fact that through a discovery or a rediscovery of elements from Christian celebrations and Christian traditions, students can find anchors, anchor points, that they can see then connections, that they can see the relevance of, that they can better understand what was at stake in a Christological controversy in, in, in Christian antiquity, that they can find the relevance of why Thomas Aquinas was saying this or that, or that they can 
that they can that they can see connections that they can also make connections between the celebrations and the buildings in which this happens that they can better understand the value of community so i think that liturgical theology uh, uh, brings along many many possibilities and in other words that it is a container of an immense potential where students can find solid and reliable resources to connect other elements that they study and that they that they experience in in their own lives so i think that there is also i think a, a deep cultural um miscontentment and maybe even criticism towards separating things too much i think what many people feel is in need to unite you also hear this in 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 political rhetorics these days we need to unify we need to concentrate do we need to recharge well i think that liturgy is capable of doing all these things um, and more how can research in liturgical theology contribute to a revival of liturgical spirituality? Well, I think it's an essential part of it because the, 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 the problem with spirituality is that it is, it has to be, and has always been something uh, ambiguous in, in the sense that you need it because it makes connections possible with life and with situating yourself in the grand chain of uh, of being and it will motivate you for um, for whatever decision that you make uh, in your life so spirituality is is, is very important is very uh, uh, is is necessary and is is saying also uh, that it goes beyond in pure intellectual comprehension. But I think that if your spirituality is to be profound, is to be prepared for unplanned for challenges, that it should also be deeply, and that also means intellectually grounded and founded. And when you talk about a Christian spirituality, and that can be that there is a diversity there that a christian spirituality or a liturgical spirituality cannot do without the 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 the, the work of uh, the intellectual work of of liturgical of liturgical theology and liturgical theologians so i think that in order for liturgical spirituality to be like a backbone in a body it, it it should it it, it should um, receive its stability from from the uh, a deep reflection and of that is offered by by liturgical theology. So in other words, I I would strongly be in favor of seeing the two together as co-constitutive. You can't have the one without the other. If your spirituality is liturgical, means that theology is involved. And if you want your liturgy to be spiritually uh, um, nourishing, then again, you need a theological uh, foundation and reflection. A spirituality uh, would emphasize that your own subjective impression is very important. That, that, that emotions have to be integrated into who you are. And, uh, um, and that is of course true. But the, a liturgical spirituality and a liturgical theology would also talk about the taming of the passions. Mm -hmm. So it's good that these passions are there, but not to control them by rigid systems, but tame them, domesticate them, make this, uh, orient them so that they are fruitful for the needs of others, so that you overcome the selfishness. So in other words, Liturgy, litur a liturgical spirituality and a liturgical theology can be of great help to overcome a purely subjectivistic or reversely objectivistic interpretations of, 
of spirituality. And they would do the, 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 the mediating work uh, uh, between the two. Thank you. Uh, I've got one final question here, which I think is a question that is asked on almost every uh, research application ever, which is uh, what are the ways in which liturgical theologians can communicate their insights to the general public? How can, this, how can these insights be dispersed and disseminated across uh, contemporary society? Well, here I would like to answer uh, the question um, by referring to, to a current of thought and a cultural era that is very dear to me and from which both explicitly and at a more hidden level I draw a lot of inspiration from. And for me, that means uh, Romanticism. I am fond of Romanticism as a constructive theological and philosophical current of thinking. I'm also fond of the period of, uh, of Romanticism that largely coincided with German idealism and, 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 and it, uh, with also with beautiful music and so forth. The point, uh, the, uh, the point that I want to make has to do with the unbridled literary creativity of many romantics. The romantics produced not only treatises, not only scientific articles in the journals like we know them today. They did not only produce monographs, but they, they wrote speeches, they wrote letters, they wrote poems of different kinds. They wrote theater. And I think that that is something which liturgical theologians today can, uh, can learn from. I think that liturgical theology must express itself not only in academic genres, but also in many other genres. And I think that means that, that, the, that not only monographs are written, but also monologues and that these monologues are performed, and that audiences that would not come for liturgical theology, but that would come for, I don't know, a saint or a figure or a person, but that the, the message of liturgical theology is formulated in such a way that it matches with these, with also with the specific exigencies of these literary genres. But I do think, as the Romantics thought, that it is possible to express your content in many different ways and that you should do that in order to reach um, a large audience but also a diversified uh, uh, audience. So I think that it, that it could be a wake up fall for many of my colleagues to write not only articles and monographs but also many other things and to give evidence of a certain literary uh, uh, creativity to get the message across. Thank you very much. I think that's a very inspiring idea, actually. Um, we've come to the end of our questions, so it just leaves me to thank you. I think all of the viewers will agree that this was uh, insightful, exceptionally eloquently expressed, and very profound. So thank you very much for meeting with us today, Professor. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Professor Joris's, Joris Geldof's book is available now, um, which I presume is something we should do. <laughs>